Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. Today, it is an amazing bread pudding with big cubes of rich brioche bread completely saturated by a delicate, perfectly sweet custard, all enrobed in a bread pudding sauce with just a touch of brandy in there. Shh, it's our secret. Let's get started. First off, the bread. So you're gonna want enough bread to fill like an eight by eight inch baking dish. Traditionally, bread pudding is a great use for stale bread. So if you have some stale bread hanging around the house, make a bread pudding with it. However, Brian's mom is in town and I wanna to make her an extra special treat. So we're gonna use brioche, which is a rich egg-based bread. Unfortunately, it's not stale, it's fresh from the market. So we're gonna to toast it up really quickly after we give it a cut. Cut your bread into roughly one inch pieces. Look at this brioche, oh my gosh, so rich. In this dessert, the bread and the sauce are really the stars. If you love raisins, you can of course add raisins to bread pudding. Toasted pecans, there's so many delicious things that can be added to this. I'm trying to cut these pieces as efficiently as possible. And they don't all have to be exactly the same size at all. I'm about to have some Virgo feelings over this bread cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. So because I'm using fresh bread instead of stale, I wanna remove some of the moisture. So we're gonna give it a quick toast in the oven at 250 for about 10 minutes. There we go. Push that onto a baking sheet. If you wanna skip this step, just go to the market and ask for like some stale bread before they throw it out or feed it to the birds. Into the oven, 250. Keep an eye on it so it doesn't singe, but it should be fine. While that bread's drying out in the oven, we're gonna make a simple custard that will just fill every nook and cranny and bake up into some amazingness. Here's the deal. Three tablespoons of butter, half a cup of sugar, two cups of milk. I warmed my milk up a bit in the microwave first just so it's not ice cold, and half a teaspoon of salt. There you go. All right, we're going to mix this up a bit and then place it over like medium heat and just scald it. We want it to be almost getting to bubbling. The butter's already melted, the sugar's dissolved, and once it scalds, or you see just a little bit of bubbling on the edge, I'm gonna take it off the heat. If you love custard, click up here for my eclair recipe. It is so good, and filled with a pastry cream that's similar to this, but a little bit thicker so it can be piped. All right, so it's scalded, bubbling on the edge, we're all done, taking it off the heat. And it'll need to cool down for just a couple minutes. My bread's just out of the oven and it's nice and crisp now, so it's gonna accept that custard and really just be amazing. The custard's almost done, it's just cooling down before I add the eggs and vanilla, but in the meantime, let's just grease our baking dish. You don't have to go crazy here, it's not gonna be really a sticky situation, but a little butter goes a long way in not having a mess. Baking dish greased, let's add in our bread and if you see any big pieces, you can rip them up. You kind of want to have less gaps on the bottom, so just push them around. And if you have any extra bread left over, croutons, just keep baking them, hello. That's good. What I like to do is just take some of the crust side and place it up on top. So I have a little bit of contrast in the finished bread pudding. And also if I see any holes, I can just fill them in and everything will be nice and comfy cozy. Now I'm setting this aside. Let your milk mixture cool down so it's warm. It could be like warm, warm, but not hot. So you don't wanna scramble those eggs. They need to be nice and silky, not chunky. All right, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of vanilla right now. If you want, you could add in a few tablespoons of brandy or whatever else, but I'm keeping that for the sauce, not for the bread pudding. Okay, now it's time for the eggs. Let's whisk them in and we're gonna be set. There we go. So you can see, I still have a nice smooth consistency. It's not curdled or anything. And it's just a matter of waiting, so don't rush it. And I'm gonna reserve about, like let's say a third of a cup of this custard. Now we're gonna carefully pour it over the top, try not to spill. I wanna make sure there's no dry pieces lurking around on top. Now I wanna show you, because there's all this liquid in here, we can begin pushing down some of the bread because even though we try, there were some air gaps here. So don't smash, but just gently kind of let the bread find the, the bottom of the pan. I have my reserved bit of custard and I'm just gonna spoon that over the top or pour it over the top just 
because I can see a couple pieces of bread that are dry and that's not the life I'm living. My bread pudding is ready to go into the oven at 350 for about 40 to 50 minutes. You don't want the bread to burn. You want it to be beautiful golden brown on top. So if you see any little spikes that are starting to burn towards the end of the bake, cover it in foil and let it continue to bake. That'll help you out. This smells so good. I can't even tell you. Just wait till it goes into the oven. Now we're gonna make our delicious sauce. It is one of my very most favorite things to eat and I'm saying that for real, real. I have two cups of milk that I scalded or made really hot in the microwave. It's not a true scald, but it'll work. And now in a small pot, I'm adding two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna put this on heat, add some flour, whisk it together. We're making a delicious sweet white sauce. Ah, my mouth's watering already. Let's go onto the oven. Once your butter's melted, add in two tablespoons of flour and whisk, 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 whisk. This is where you're creating a roux. So just cook the butter and flour for about a minute while you whisk it up. After a minute and a little bit of browning, slowly pour in the two cups of milk while you whisk. You can take a break and keep whisking it up. Adding the milk in gradually gives you a thick, silky sauce with a great consistency. After the milk goes in, add in half a cup of brown sugar. Whoa, this is where that magic happens. You don't have to use brown sugar for this recipe, but it adds a little bit of depth of flavor, which I love. Okay, you can see the consistency starting to thicken up. Once it starts thickening up, keep an eagle eye on it and whisk, whisk, whisk. That's when it can bubble over, so be careful. Sauce is appropriately thickened, taking it off the heat. Now I'm adding in three tablespoons, that's a very liberal three tablespoons of brandy. A lot of the brandy's gonna cook off, you're not gonna get a big hit of alcohol, but if you want, you can use two tablespoons of vanilla bean paste or vanilla extract instead. This can be set aside to cool down a bit while we work on the rest. My bread pudding just came out of the oven and I wanna show you a couple things. First off, if you don't wanna make the sauce, Sprinkle, 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 just a little bit of powdered sugar. It looks great. After half an hour of baking, I was keeping an eye on things and I covered it with foil for like the last 10 or so minutes, just so it didn't over brown. I wanted it to be nice and golden on top. I like to spoon over, let's say half of the sauce first, right after baking, so the bread pudding really absorbs it all. Even though it's filled with custard, there's a little bit of space for the sauce. You don't have to use all the sauce. If you don't want, you can reserve some for later. It heats up really well and it is delicious on ice cream. In fact, this whole dessert is an excellent make ahead thing. You can just pop it into the oven to warm up again or reheat the individual servings. If your white sauce ever curdles, don't throw it away. Put it into a blender and whiz, 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 whiz while it's still warm. If it's being extra finicky, you can add like a little bit of cream or water in, just like a tiny drizzle and blend it up and it should come back to life and be super silky. I'm gonna let this soak for a minute and then we're going to cut it and add more of the sauce on top. All right, I'm gonna cut a piece for everybody in the house, but me first. Okay, that is what I call a delicious bread pudding. All right, just a little bit extra. Who would wanna say no to that? Look at this. If you like this recipe, check out my Eclair video. It has everything you could ever want in a dessert and more. <laughs> now it's time for a bite though. Look at that. Oh my God, the texture is beyond. Little dap in that sauce. Oh my gosh. Okay, I love this recipe because you can make it, enjoy it, and there's some left for later and it keeps for so long in the fridge. You can keep it for days and days just warm it up again and add some more of that warm sauce on top. Oh, my mouth is watering. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.